All right, so we're going to continue, what is this, 6, 4? 6, 5. 6, 5, okay. So 6, 5, B. All right, we're going to do uh, most of this on our, uh, on our calculator. I was thinking about this last night, if I should make you do some of this by hand, but I know. I know. All right, so we're going to talk about some specific polar graphs today. Okay. So I've got uh, some specific ones that the book uh, likes. All right, so here we go. Part A, we're going to talk about rose curves. See, it's just the perfect time. JSB is coming up, hearts and roses and calculators. It all just makes sense. It all goes together. So rose curves are going to be the ones that are going to look like petals, like flowers, okay? So here's how you make a rose curve. You are going to do R equals A times the cosine of N theta or R equals A times the sine of N theta. It really doesn't matter if you use cosine or sine. You're still going to get a rose. They call it a rose curve. It's not really a rose. It's like a flower. Yes. And then N, if N is odd, so if you do cosine of 3N, 5N, 7N, then your flower will have N number of petals. <gasps> it's springtime. We're just talking about flowers this morning. That's fun. If um, N is even, so if you have 2N, 4N, 6N, 8N, I mean 8 theta, sorry. If N is even, then you will have 2N petals. I know, twice as many. It's crazy. So if you want to make a rose with um, four petals, you would want N to be what? Two. Okay. Now, we're also going to talk about the maximum R value. So there's going to be a max R, and that's going to be the farthest. You know how R's are, going to, are our circles on a polar graph? It's the maximum that the R goes out to. Okay? So our max R is equal to the absolute value of A. Okay, it's the distance from the pole that is bounded by the graph. Now, when they ask you to analyze, okay, they're going to ask you to graph these graphs and then analyze them. What you're going to do is you want to tell us what the symmetry is. Because analyze is so funny. They don't ask you, like, what's the symmetry? What's this? What's this? They say, analyze this graph. <laughs> Well, what do you want when you analyze? I don't know. This is what they're going to want. They're going to want symmetry. They're also going to want domain. And domain is um, what theta is. And then they also want the range, which is R. Um, and they want the maximum R value. OK? So we'll do one, and I'll walk you through how to analyze. We'll do the whole thing. All right. And you can do all these on your calculator, okay? So here we go. Let's do one. Number one. Number one. <clears throat> um, it says, analyze. Analyze R equals 3 sine of 4 theta. Sometimes they'll put parentheses around 4 theta. Sometimes they just leave it off, but it's sine of 4 theta, okay? We're going to analyze this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to just try and draw a nice picture of it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so go to your calculator and make sure that you are in polar mode. You know what? Yesterday, we, in my second period class, we did these in degrees, and they liked it better. Because, because radians is hard. You know, pi over 2 radians, we know that is, is 90 degrees. If we're in degrees, that might be a little bit better. So do you mind switching? Do you want to switch with me? Let's switch. Let's, let's do it do together. It. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so go to um, mode and switch over to degree and polar. Okay? Now you're going to have to fix your window, though, when you do this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through that, too. All right, so we're going to go to y equals, which is r equals, 3 sine of 4 theta. Yeah. This? Uh, the, no, the, 
Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, three sine of four theta. Now, if um, you were in radian, which you probably were because I was too, just hit zoom six right now. If you hit zoom six, it'll change it to degrees for you. Okay? So it'll graph it correctly. And if you go to window now, see how your theta is from zero to 360 instead of zero to two pi? I think you might like that better. I don't know. I'm going to try that this year. Did you get it? Yeah. It's pretty, huh? Yeah. And then um, if you want to, you can hit zoom in. Zoom in zooms in a little bit too much. Thanks. <laughs> Again. Okay. Um, so zoom, zoom in gives you too much of a zoom. So you can go to a window, and we can change our X to be from, like, negative 4 to 4, and Y is negative 4 to 4. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good window. Right? Do I need to move this? I'm sorry. All right, so that's what yours looks like. It's beautiful, huh? It's gorgeous. All right. Now, if we wanted some specific points, you could hit trace and go around this thing, and look how good that is. R equals 3 at 22.5 degrees. I like that better. This is the first year I've done this. This is exciting for me. You keep going around, and it goes down there at theta equals 67.5. It goes all the way out to negative 3. Okay, see all of these? Keeps going around. It's kind of fun. All right, so let's draw a sketch of this, and then we'll analyze it. Here we go. Um, yeah, your sketch, like I said, doesn't have to be perfect. It looks like there's two petals in each quadrant, so make sure you at least have that correct, you know? So I've got a couple petals here. Oh, that's really bad. How's yours? Is yours pretty good? No. no. That's not bad. Mine looks like a bunch of hot dogs. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Ugh. Yeah. Yours should be better than that, right? Okay, let's talk about domain now. The domain of this graph are going to be theta, all the thetas, okay? And in this case, there's no restriction on theta. I can put in negatives and positives, and it can go around forever and ever and ever. And so you can list that as negative infinity to infinity, okay? Uh, the range, though, the range is a little bit different. The range are the R values. Now, when you hit trace and you looked at it, okay, how, how far did the R's go in the negative direction? What was the smallest negative R value? Did you notice it? No. No? Again. Okay. Try it again. So hit negative trace. Two, two, oh, keep going. Uh huh. Three. Negative three. The range is negative three to positive three. And that has to do with this three out front. Okay, it's not gonna go past that in either direction, negative or positive. So it went to negative three over here, and then over here it's positive three. It's just the way it's graphing. What's the domain infinity? So domain are going to be the thetas. Okay. So you can plug in any theta you want. You can take the sine of any angle. Okay. So there's no restrictions on that. All right, uh, what's the symmetry here? Symmetry, you see any? You should see a lot. Symmetry. It's all three, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so, you know, should I be picky with you guys? Probably not. Do you want to write x-axis, y-axis, and origin? You really do, don't you? All three? Um, no, I wouldn't accept all three. I would accept x-axis, which is really the polar axis. I used to tell people that they had to write polar axis. But I, I know what you're talking about. I know it's the x-axis. And then the y-axis is also some symmetry here, which is, and if you want to write it as theta equals pi over 2, you can. But this is also symmetric over the origin, too, or the pole. Right, Jeanette? Yeah. All right. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, that's fun. Okay, and then what is the max R? The max R is going to be what is the farthest radius that this flower went to? What was it? Three. three. The max R is three. And that's always the number right here, the absolute value of that number, right? Because remember, this right here was A, 
and the max r is at the absolute value of a. But you can also see it. So it's not like, oh, I gotta memorize that. No, you can see it goes to r is three. And you wouldn't say your max r is negative three, because then, you know, that would be a negative number. The maximum is the farthest it goes. And then they might ask you one more question. Hold on, real quick. Um, they might ask you how many petals, number of petals. You can tell by either looking at the equation, because this n is four, it's even, so there's going to be eight petals, or you can just count them on your graph. Yeah? So that three in front of the sign? Yes. Um, that's always going to be our range and our max r? Yep. Yeah. Aren't those fun? Rose curves are not hard. They're not hard to do. They're pretty good. Okay, let's move on then. Part B. We've got three parts. Bless you. We're already done with one. Um, now, these are either called Limacon or li Limason, or I, I'm not sure. Or Limacon. People have a different Limason, Limason curves. I've heard it different ways. I call them Limacon. I don't know. Limacin. Limacin? Okay. Sure. You can call them Limacin. That's fun. You just wanted. Sounds like Limacon. Mm. Lima curves. Lima bean curves. Do they look like Lima beans? Oh. A little bit. Okay, lima, lima con curves look like this. R equals, and you're going to have A plus or minus B sine theta. <laughs> or R equals A plus or minus B cosine theta. Doesn't matter. Okay. Now, there are uh, four different types of limacons. I'm just gonna list them, okay? I'm, I probably won't ask you which one it is, but here they are. You could have a limacon that has an inner loop. An inner loop, okay? That would look like this. Um, it goes like, uh, no, 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 hold on. I almost had it. Like that. It's like a heart, but it loops inside. Okay? So you could have an inner loop. You could also have another type would be a cardioid. What do you think that looks like? A heart. Yes. Cardioid. Looks like a heart. We drew one yesterday. Looks like that. Okay? But sometimes it'll give you an inner loop on, on that too, depending on what A and B are. So you'll have an inner loop, a cardioid. Bless you. And then the other two are kind of, eh. You'll have something that could be dimpled or convex. Can the cardioid go like up and down? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's do one. You ready? No. Number, okay. Bless you. Oh, my goodness. Did you guys win yesterday? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. How'd you do? Did you do okay? Yeah. Oh, good. You and your brother? Your double steam? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, number two. I like Can to see that. Those, the, the dimpled and the convex? Yes. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what they look like, but uh, yeah. Um, the dimpled one, it looks like this. It looks like it wants to be a heart, but it doesn't quite make it to be a heart, you know? No. It gets punched in a little bit, but not all the way to a heart. I get it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like a bean. Yeah, and then convex would be um, it like the part where it's supposed to be a heart just kind of goes flat. Uh, I know that's a convex, even though it doesn't jet out. But yeah, so those are kind of eh. they're not my faves. All right, so let's do one. Here we go. We're gonna analyze analyze r equals three minus three sine theta. Analyze it. <gasps> Done already? Okay. Um, so here we go, we're gonna analyze this. So first of all, yeah, Nick's in band, Nick. right? Nick! Nick's in band. You're in a band? Are you, are you leaving? <laughs> You're leaving today? Yeah. Okay, well good luck, Nick. All right, so go ahead and graph this. It's three minus three sine theta. And then hit graph. Ooh, pretty. Really pretty. Okay. Um, I should have told you something here, though. 
before we did one. Can we go back up to this stuff right here? Sure we can. All right. So first of all, if you're going to find the max R on this one, it's a little different. The max R is going to be the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. That's how you find the max R. And then we'll do, we'll talk about domain and range too in just a minute. Okay, so let's analyze this. So first of all, let's graph it. My window's not good. Is your window good? I'm gonna hit zoom six and see if that fixes things. Like Does it? It looks like a heart to me. You don't see it? Zoom square. Um, zoom square, does that help? Yeah, it kind of looks tomato-y. Yeah, or like an apple even. Okay, um, so what you can do is you can get some actual points on here. The peach again, there it is. <laughs> negative seven to seven, negative seven to seven. I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit on it. Ooh, that looks good, that's nice. All right, if I want some specific points, you know, you can hit trace and three, r equals three and theta is zero. That's a good point to graph right there, okay? And then keep tracing it. And another good point to graph would be at 90 degrees, are you tracing it? At 90 degrees, you get R is zero. So we know for sure that it goes to there, okay? And then keep tracing it again. What do you think this is gonna be on this side? Over here, mm-hmm, yep. So keep going, trace it again. All done? Did you get the bonus? <laughs> Very easy, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, you can put it over there. Thanks, Bobby. Have a good time. All right. And then how far does it go at the bottom at 270? What does it go to? Six. Six. He's not a freshman. He's getting like 103%. All right. There you go. Okay. So let's draw it. Ooh, let's draw it in red because it is a cardioid. Oh I missed. It doesn't look like that? No, oh, it's good. There, that's better, sort of. Is yours better than mine? Probably. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> can you move a little bit? No? No, you're all right? All right. Oh, you can put that on my desk. Thanks, Kelsey. She's a freshman, too. Really good at math. Yes, thank you. <laughs> They're all freshmen. What's in the water? Math, for sure. Okay. Let's go ahead and analyze this thing. So. Let's start with the max R. What's the max R on this? How, what's the farthest it went out to? Six. Right here. That's the maximum R it went to was six. Okay? Now they might also ask, at what theta does that maximum R go to? Can you ever get a cardioid to like have a point in two? No, I don't think so. I mean, you could keep trying. Three pi over two. Three pi over two. Perfect. Or 270 degrees. Okay, either way, doesn't matter. You could have also said negative 90 if you wanted to. That would have been fine. All right, and then what is the domain and the range? Domain and range. He's really good at math too. Whoa, there's like all my top students coming in here. They're all good at band and math. Maybe it's correlation. Thank you, good job. Got 100. Maybe it's a correlation. Maybe. Okay, what's the domain? Domain is, once again, all real numbers. Okay, we can plug anything we want to in for theta to get sine of theta. What's the range on this one? What was the smallest R value it went to when you went trace? What did it go to? Zero. Zero, six. Okay, um, if you wanted to know, like, how to get that, um, you would do A minus B and A plus B wait, would be wait, the range. For the range? Yeah, so the range is always <coughs> A minus B and A plus B. And I don't really want to tell you that because I don't want people to memorize stuff, but I mean, I don't, if you want to, go ahead. All right, and what's the symmetry here? Do you see any symmetry? How would you find it without memorizing it? Um, I, I like to just trace it and watch my, my values of R go around the circle. No, it actually gives you really good ones on these, if you've noticed. It gives you exactly six. Yeah. 
And so you go around. It gives you three, and it it, it stops. Because it goes 0 to 360. That's what my window is for theta. So if I go back this way, 6 is the most it goes to. I can just watch R, and it goes to 0. Okay? You have to be in... You have to go to format. If you weren't here yesterday, you have to go to format and change it to polar. Polar GC, polar coordinates. Okay? It's really important that you're in polar coordinates. Okay, so what is the symmetry of this? Y axis. Perfect. I'll accept that. Very good. And then, did we already do max R? Yep, max R was 6. Yeah? Why is it positive 6 and not negative on the range? On the range? Yeah. Oh, it only went to positive 6. If you watched it on here, my yeah, mine never went to negative. So you trace this thing, and it starts because if you have theta, if you have theta is from zero to three sixty, and then you trace it, it never goes to r is negative six. <coughs> it goes to zero, all the way to positive six. Zero is the smallest r value. Positive six is the largest. You trace it around from 0 to 360. All right, let's do um, one more of these because, you know, there's different kinds in this one. So number three, let's now analyze. We're going to analyze this one. R equals 2 plus 3 cosine theta. Let's take a look what this one looks like. We're going to graph it. We're going to say what the maximum R value is. Um, we're going to say the domain and the range and symmetry. Okay? All right, we're doing okay on time? No. No. We're doing okay on time then. Yeah. Sorry, Jeanette. All right, 2 plus 3 cosine theta, and then go ahead and graph. Oh, look at that one. Can you see that? No, me neither. I'm going to zoom in on it. Oh, that's what it did there. You see, that's an inner loop. It's an inner loop. Uh, and I zoomed in a little too much. Okay, so let's go maybe like X min, let's go like negative 2 to 5, I don't know. Y, negative 2 to 5. Let's try that. I need a, a smaller Y. So I'm going to change my Y min to maybe negative 5. There we go. Okay, so I did my X min, negative 2, X max, positive 5. Y min and Y max is negative 5 to 5. And it looks like a pretty good, pretty good window. I might want to change the X to maybe 6 because I want to see if I can see the end of it. There we go. That's even better. Okay, so now let's go ahead. Let's trace this thing. Trace. So it looks like R equals 5 when theta is 0. So we can graph that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And, you know, just get some points. Just trace it along. There's some really good points on this, and there's some gross ones, too. It looks like on the y-axis, what does it hit there? Two. two. Okay? And then r is two, and then r starts to go to zero, and it goes all the way to what? Negative, Negative one. So it goes in here. So it goes like this, and then it loops underneath and through, it's pretty good. It's not very good, but I hope yours is better than that. Did you get a better one than that? Is yours good? No. Okay, so now let's talk about max R, domain, range, all that good stuff. What is the maximum R value that this went to? Five. The farthest away from the pole, from the origin, was five. Uh, the domain, all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity, no restrictions on. Just write yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. The range on this is a little trickier. Negative one to five. Ooh, perfect. Negative one to five. See this? If you wanted to memorize this, it would it would be a minus b. Two minus three is negative one. 
2 plus 3 is positive 5. I don't want you have to memorize that, though. I just traced it, looked at R, and found that negative 1 was the smallest value. And then the symmetry is over the? Polar. Polar. Ooh, I even like that. Polar axis. You could say x-axis if you like. Good. Aren't these fun, Nick? Yeah. Yeah, Curtis broke that yesterday. Isn't that great? Yeah. Oh, you know, some kid in my other class. All right. I shouldn't call anybody out. I talk trash too much. All right, here we go. Uh, last part. Letter C. I'm going to have to tell you, these are my least favorite. Here we go. These are called lemniscate curves. Lemniscate. Who came up with these words? I don't know. Not Gauss, because they weren't around when Gauss was doing stuff. Lemniscate, Mr. Le Dr. Lemniscate. Mm -hmm. mm. He was Italian, yep, for sure. All right, lemniscate curves look like this. R squared equals A squared times the sine of 2 theta or R squared equals A squared times the cosine of 2 theta. Okay, um, the maximum, that's gross, the maximum R value is going to equal the absolute value of A. In the equation, it's A squared, take the square root, okay? Uh, the domain is tricky on these. The domain ends up being really weird, and so we actually, we just skip it. <laughs> Because I'm not going to make this stuff hard. I want this stuff to be fun, kind of. And I don't want to do, like, the super hard. But you're not going to need that, so don't worry about it. The range is pretty easy. The range is just negative A to positive A every time. Okay? And these are going to look like infinity symbols. That's what they look like. So, you know, they could be diagonal ones. That's gross. Why can I not draw today? It's the style. It is, huh? Thank you. I appreciate that. There you go. It could be a, a diagonal one. It could be a you know straight on one. But they're all going to be infinity symbols. Okay, so here we go. Now, the reason why the domain is tricky is because when you graph this, you have to graph 2 because it's r squared. So you have to take the square root. Well, guess what? Anytime you take square root, you have to have a positive number. Well, what values of theta make sine positive? See how tricky that is? We're not going to do that, so you're welcome. All right, last one. What number are we on? Four, five? One, two, three, four. Number four. Here we go. Let's graph one. R squared equals four times the cosine of two theta. Okay? And, you know, these are real tricky. They, they kind of, I don't know. They're not, they're not great. All right, so first you're going to graph r equals the square root of 4 cosine 2 theta. And you're going to graph r equals negative square root 4 cosine 2 theta. How'd you, how'd you like get those? Take the square root of both sides. Oh, just so you have yeah, because you can't plug in r squared. These are all r equals. So I had to solve for r by taking the plus and minus square root of both sides. So... I get the square root of 4 cosine of 2 theta and the negative square root. Oh, the two yes, yeah, or else you're just going to get the 1 and, you know, you need 2. All right, and then I'm going to hit zoom 6. Yeah, there you go. Try zoom 4. Zoom 4? What is zoom 4? I don't know, but 4 seems tiny. Zoom decimal. And it kind of makes it prettier. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I wonder what that does. Every single time it's been, like, better. Really? Yeah. Okay. Zoom 4, you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, and that looks like a bow tie for JSB. See? It's just yeah. <laughs> it's perfect timing. Like, or it looks like, you know, um, nothing. <laughs> okay. No, like a push-up, you know, like to a strapless dress. Okay. Oh, Anyways. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Trung, did you already say that? No, a different joke. Oh, okay. I don't want to know. All right, here we go. So I'm going to graph it. Here it is. Oh, wow, that's real bad. 
Jeanette, be nice. It's the stylist. Plus my kids boogers all over the screen. Okay, so <laughs> if it asks you for a domain, don't worry about it. Don't worry about domain. It's bad. It's really bad. Actually, domain on this one is zero to pi over four, and then three pi over four to five pi over four, and then seven pi over four to two pi. It's really nasty. Really bad. Okay? Do don't do it. No. All right, but let's find the range. The range is pretty easy to find. You can hit trace and go around again. Hey, girl. Did you see? Yes. So fun. Okay. Hit trace. And then you just go around, see, and, and it looks like... It looks like it's all the thetas, but it's not. And see all those R's? See how the R doesn't exist there? When theta is 285? And then you get back on track and you're good again. Well, because it's going to make this negative. Like if I took, what's the cosine of 3 pi over 4? That's a negative number. You can't take the square root of a negative number in your imaginary, and this is not imaginary. Okay, so the range is, how far did our R's go? Where, where did we go? Did you, were you watching? Did it go out to negative two? It did not on that one, but you know what? If you um, trace the other one, no, it's, yeah, it's two, yeah, I had to go and trace the other graph. There's two graphs there, and mine was only tracing one, which goes to two. The other graph goes to negative two because of this negative right here. So the range for all of these, remember, the range is going to be. I gave you a little formula for that. Negative a to positive a. So it's going to be negative, bless you, negative 2 to positive 2. And then what's the max r? The max r is 2. That's the farthest r value that it goes to, the biggest r. And then uh, what's the symmetry? The symmetry is a little tricky. The decimal helps on that one a lot. It's y-axis, it's also x-axis, and it's the origin. Yeah, it's all three. So symmetry is x-axis, polar axis if you want to write that, y-axis, and origin. That's gross.